Lucy Sims, and we are back with more Code Realize Wintertime Miracles. <laughs> and it's been a couple days since I played, because I got busy. I didn't have time to do stuff. And I'm behind on recording! I'm behind on recording everything. Um, so, oh, uh, I'm seriously thinking we might need to go back to half hour parts. Not like right now, because I'm in these routes. We're doing our hour parts. Um, we might have to go to half hour parts, which... It's so like I don't want to do, but at the same time, I I find that I don't have I I mean, like I have plenty of hours in the afternoon, but I have things that I want to do and things that I have to do, and I'm just having the hardest time keeping up with the recording. Even though we technically only have one going up a day, as opposed to when we had like what three? We had three games going up, and I'm like I can't even manage to keep one, and I'm like. Because I was so far ahead, I would sit there and I would record, but I don't know why lately I'm just like, it's like a chore to do it. I love these games, and I get in and I start playing, and I love them, but I think what it is is just, if I'm going to sit here and do this for like an hour, I want to get more out of it than one part, because there are days where I just get busy doing other stuff, and I'm like, crap, I didn't record. It's cool. I Oh, God, no, it's not. Like, I normally have all the stuff for the week recorded and uploaded Sunday. It's all ready to go. Sunday, I upload the entire week. And then I, you know, come the week you're watching everything, I'm recording for the next week. I have not finished the stuff for this week yet. Obviously, this part is going up on what, Saturday, I think. I'm just doing it Monday. I'm like, I, oh my God. And I don't like doing that because then that what happens is I forget that I have to process and upload. And then it's like, crap, I need to make sure it's done by this point so I can process it overnight. And then I can upload it the next day and it's like it's like a three-day fucking process so yeah so we might need to go to half hour parts again um I, I don't know i don't know what it is uh also i fought for like 15 minutes trying to get my playstation to freaking work because there was no sound so i'm like hello i i'm like this is not helping so i don't know um i love these games i just there are other things now that the weather's nice i want to be able to go out and go for walks and keep my apartment organized and clean and like just do other stuff, crafty things or whatever. But I know that like all I do is spend my time just doing all of this and I, I don't want it to become a chore, but I feel like it kind of is like there are days that I just don't feel like recording and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do it. And then it's like, well, crap, now I'm really behind and then I have to do it. And I used to sit here on Friday nights and I would record for like five or six hours. And now like this past Friday, I only did like two. Cause I was like, I just don't want to <laughs> like, I think it's just like, I don't know. I want to say, I want to read, I want to read books. I want to enjoy the fact that I just totally redid my apartment. You know, I had never did my kitchen. I didn't go through all my shit, in my kitchen crap anyway, but I did everything else. And like, I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy it. I want to sit in my reading chair and read you know, and I try to read every night anyway, but it's like, but I realize that I don't have a lot of time to do things, but because I'm like, well, I got to record for a couple of hours. So we might have to go back to half hour parts. Um, I think it'll be a little bit easier in this one because now that we've gotten through the main routes, um, all the little short stories, the side stories are half hour. We'll just do those of their own. You know what I mean? And be done with it and like not worry about, well, we'll record two. We'll just do the side dates as one. Um, and then we'll we do Sholmes and Finnis. We'll see um, when we get to those. I haven't decided after Lupin what I'm going to do. Like, am I going to go to Sholmes and Finnis? Um, am I going to do the Cantarella side story? I feel like we can use, do we want to do the little triangle date things at the end? Do I want to do one of the triangle dates in the middle just to, maybe that'll give me a little bit of a buffer. We do a couple of those, you know? Um this way, I'm like, okay, good. Maybe that'll give me a little bit of a break and to catch up, and then it won't seem so like, oh my god, I don't know. So I don't know what's gonna come after Lupin, aside from the Lupin and Victor triangle date thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll do some of the other triangle dates just to give me, so I can get a couple of things and get a little bit more ahead, and then maybe it won't seem so daunting, and we won't have to do half hour parts. I don't know, but like. I don't want this to become a chore and I don't want to be like, eh, we just don't have anything for a week. Like, I don't want to do that, but it's going to be half hour parts or that's going to happen. Cause I've just, I don't know. There's just other things I want to do right now. So 
and I don't want to like get to the point where like I regret playing and I'm like God, I hate this because I don't hate it. I get excited. Like I love turning these games on, but it's just okay. Now we're now we're doing this, and like it's an hour, and like oh crap, like. I get home early and I didn't go for a walk today and it's already freaking six o'clock and it's like, okay, by the time we're done with seven and then I got to get ready and get all my stuff for work tomorrow. And then it's like, and then I have time to like sit down and it's like, Oh God, you know, like time gets away from me lately, even though it stays lighter out longer, but like, there's just so much other stuff I need to get done. So anyway, or, and want to do so it's just the way it is, but I also don't want the games to go on forever because I'd like to do, I have a bazillion games on Steam. I'd like to play them. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, we'll see what happens. So that's that. Just in case we go to half hour parts, but I'll let you know when we get there. But anyway, this one will be an hour part because we're going to keep that standard. So now that I just wasted like three hours of our hour long part, <laughs> we're back where we were. And I don't remember what happened because it's been like three or four days since I played. <laughs> Anyway, returning back to town after the awe-inspiring sight of the Christmas tree, I helped Shirley choose a gift for her father, as thanks for insisting we visit the roadside church. Taking our leave from Shirley and Passy, once again I find myself alone with Lupin. Oh, how pretty that is. As the sun slipped behind the clouds, painting the immaculate snowscape in gentle shades of crimson, we finally decide to bring an end to our tour of Yuletide London and begin to and begin to head in the direction of the mansion. Soon we'll, we will at last be home, home at St. Germain's Mansion, of which I'm so fond. Lupin and I chat as we stroll the familiar streets. Today was festive indeed, don't you think? The sun's going down, but there still seems to be just as many revelers about. Wait, where are my manners? We were on our feet all day. Are you knackered? No, I'm fine. I haven't been back to London in ages. It was such fun, seeing so many interesting people, the city crackling with energy. And now I'll get to spend time with St. Germain, Victor, and Impey. Lupin's gang together once again, sharing a wonderful Christmas together. I must make the most of it. Um, also Van Helsing. The fuck? I know we ran into him. Did we run into him earlier? But still, it's not like, now I'll get to spend time with everybody else, but not Van Helsing. Girl... I have, why do I hate Van Helsing so much? Jeez. Because on Boxing Day, well, I suppose it'll be back to Wales for me. What is Boxing Day? Is it the day after Christmas? Because you're throwing out all your boxes. Like, what is it? I don't know. That's like a British thing. That's not a U.S. thing. We don't do that. Is something wrong, Spacey? Ah, I knew it. You look so tired. Can't quite do his voice right now. Victor's been saying your stamina might not be what it was before. I'm sorry. Here I was dashing about at top speed. That's so not his voice. I don't know what's happening. See, this too. I can't do the voices anymore. My brain is broken. Like, I feel like I just want to be that asshole. Just like turn on the voice. I can be like, no, no, it's not that. I am reading the words and just read it monotone. <laughs> you know what I'm just going to do? I'm going to let the voice out. I'm just going to be that person who just clicks the button. I'm not even going to talk. I'm not even... Bikes muted everything, and it's just you're just gonna hear them, and I'm gonna click the buttons, and I'm not even gonna speak at all. I hate that. It's like if I wanted to just read through the game, I'd fucking buy the game. I understand that like some people like can't afford to buy all the games. I mean, I can't either, but I do it anyway. So, but you know what I'm saying? Like that to me is like, no, I. That's not as fun. I. I have more fun talking and being like, oh my god. Like, plus this you can stop and if you're playing it yourself whatever N no it's not that i try to think of a segue into another topic but it eludes me i'm just talking to lupin the same old lupin i've known for quite some time now and yet my chest literally aches today's completely casual conversation walking about the city as we had so many times before made me realize something you love him i'm blessed with so many friends with whom I experienced adventures and hardship here in London. Precious friends. They were all supposed to be equally precious. Men I loved equally. Yes. So we could get a man harem route. But they just don't want to give us that. Triangle dates, I mean. They gave us something. <laughs> and yet, I'm beginning to think that Lupin may not strictly be a friend. 
What I mean to say is, of course he is. Lupin is a dear friend, but he may also be something more. And now, all I can think about is the fact that I want to take whatever this is one step further. Say, Spacey, before we step into the mansion, can I ask you to hear me out? Lupin comes to a halt in front of the grand entrance to St. Germain's mansion. The timbre of his voice is the same as earlier, when it seemed he was about to say something before we encountered Shirley. No, in fact, he sounded even more serious. Actually, there's it's something I've been meaning to tell you for a while. I somehow I keep missing the opportunity to just say this, but I... I'm in love with St. Germain. What? <laughs> just kidding. What is he about to say? Oh, God, someone's going to interrupt. We're going to get cock-blocked again. What are the next words out of his mouth going to be? Paralyzed by both desperation to know and trepidation at what I might hear, I could do nothing but hold my breath in the grips of intense anxiety. And then, most unexpectedly... <laughs> I was like, what? I don't know what Zutalo is. I don't, is that how you say it? I don't Anyway. Are all our so-called compatriots spying on us then? Huh? I know you're there. Show yourselves already. Confused, I follow Lupin's icy glare. Then... Well, how very you, Lupin. I'm genuinely amazed you took notice of me from so far away. <laughs> it would appear you're finally back to your old self. Approaching from a blind spot behind the main gate as they spoke were none other than Victor and St. Germain. <laughs> Both of them are among my best friends in the world. Victor, St. Germain, it's been ages. Welcome back, Miss Spacey. How was your no-doubt long-awaited tour of London? I imagine you're fairly bursting to talk, but it's quite chilly out, so please do come inside first. Uh, preparations for the party are all done. I'll let you two are in the mansion proper. The whole gang will be back together. The children in Impia are all in a tizzy about when exactly you would arrive, so you best hurry and see them. Yes, of course. Although I answered St. Germain's words cheerfully enough, I steal a glance back at Lupin. I'm certain Lupin was about to say something of import, of import to me just now, but... Oh, God, do we ask him or keep... I think we should ask him. Let's ask him. The truth is... I'm more than a little afraid to ask. I'd be lying if I said part of me wasn't relieved when Lupin was interrupted. However, I found the prospect of never learning what he intended to say to me even more frightening. Lupin, what were you just about to say? I bet even if he said keep quiet, it's just slightly different. And I was like, but you know, not knowing. Yeah. Uh, no, I lost my opportunity. And the timing's off, so let's just stick a pin in it for now. His smile looked forced. Poor precious thing. He steps closer, patting me awkwardly on the head. It was terribly unlike him. What you doing, bugger? I swear I'll tell you when the time is right. It is cold out here. So run along ahead now. Mm, fair enough. Part of me wanted to question him there and then, but... We're gonna go in and he's gonna look at him and be like, Fuck both of you! Oh my god! I simply nodded and turned toward the mansion. He's going to have words. Here we go. After Spacey disappeared completely inside the cavernous mansion. Yeah. right -o. I decided to consult Victor and St. Germain, purposefully neglecting to hide my misgivings. I am dying to go in and have our grand holiday reunion. But there's something I'd like to ask you to first. Hmm? I don't suppose this could possibly be about the letters. Yeah. Spacey told me she'd been posting letters to the mansion recently. But I never got a single one. Which has me thinking. If anyone knows what's going on here, it's a mansion resident who isn't me. Uh, well, if you've put that much together already, there's no longer any point in hiding it. Your suspicions are right on the money. We kept her letters. Impy and both of us as well. Why would you do something like that? Because we love her, and fuck you, we're not. We're taking her away from you. Oh my god. <gasps> Is this the man harem route? <laughs> That's what we should have had. Instead of the Alistair and Nemo side date, we should have had the fucking, like, everybody date. We should have had the man harem date. That would have been the best. It would have been, like, everybody. 
spacing out what she wanted, even if it's only going to be half an hour, it would have been so worth it. We should just do that one, like, after we do the Lupin Victor one, just to get it out of the way. Dreading that. Anyway. Perhaps because I had worked most of it out already, I wasn't angry. I know these men too well. None of them would have done something so unreasonable without a good reason. Unreasonable without a good reason. Sure enough, Victor and Saint Germain both lower their heads in apology, wearing identical expressions of dismay. To be completely honest, seeing you two together was beginning to irritate me most profoundly indeed. It was clear as day the two of you had serious feelings for one another. Uh, but after the incident, you went your separate ways, all walking solitary paths without ever having talked about it. A bearing silent witness to two people who deserve happiness together, failing to attain it is a difficult thing. I never would have interfered if the people in question were at peace with it, but you two are a, a special case. And therefore, we had to resort to fairly unpleasant methods in order to make you aware of your feelings for one another. They're so cute. I love them so much. So that's... 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 That's deed. So that you might both realize the heartache that failing to spend your precious time together would cause. So that you might understand happiness is still well within your reach and how wondrous that fact is. I sighed deeply, scratching my head. It would appear I was the only one who didn't know. Oh, what a pathetic joke. A joke, truly. What a joke that all my friends knew what was going on in our hearts, and I did not. Well, it's time for me to return these. You should read them, I think. He's just been carrying them around. Was, was Victor doing? He's like, hold on. They're like, Victor, I just thought you gained 40 pounds. He's like, no, it's just a fuck ton of letters. Victor takes a sheaf of letters from a pocket and hands them to me. Is he wearing cargo pants? Because I'm just saying. How many fucking letters are you fitting in your pocket? And people are like, what is, what is in your... Is that a banana? No, it's a pile of letters that I stole from you. Hoarding your letters. <laughs> this soft, refined handwriting was spacey's. There could be, could be no doubt. Oh, wait. Hold on. Th these! After reading only the opening lines of the first letter, my hands are trembling and my heart leaps in my chest. I imagine her subconscious was speaking. Affection practically flowed from every word. I want to see you. I want to spend time in London with you again. Her sincerest feelings aimed at the person to whom the passage was addressed. She's like, Impy, what? In her way, she wanted me to be aware of her pure emotion, devoid of artifice. The letters were addressed to us all, of course, and so she doesn't quite come out and say it. But she may as well have. Virtually every page is informed by her affection for you, uh, the written word can hardly contain it. And that is how we reached our conclusion. I cannot stand idly by and do nothing. And she deserves to be even happier. I just love her voice so much. Could you, are you going to cry? I'm going to cry. Not like for real, but this is not like a Toa thing, okay? I'm not really going to actually bawl my eyes out, but and it's so, they're like, they're so cute. They're like, Look, we had to steal the letter so that you two would realize you're in love with each other because, like, God, are you stupid? Could you just go marry her now? Jesus. It's adorable. This is why you want to love them all. You're like, they're all so good. You can't be like, I'm this one. He's my, they're all my favorite. Okay, like, Impy's, like, my least favorite, but I still love him, and he's still, like, you know, adorable. And, like, this is probably one of the few games that I've played where I'm like, I just like them all. It's a little hard to choose. It really is. But anyway. And taking St. Germain's word to heart, I passed through the portal to the mansion. My friends made all the arrangements. And now I know how she feels. There's only one more thing left to do. And I feel like it's long been decided. <gasps> Run the fuck away. Because I'm a commitment phobe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> do you imagine? Bad ending. As far as I can tell, nothing's changed a lick in the Lupin Gang's secret hideout. Count St. Germain's mansion. When everyone finally gets into the same room, we'll have so much to talk about. <laughs> uh, I missed you, my princess! I wrote letters, but nary a reply. I've lived every day in abject, wailing misery. Certain we'd never meet again. Uh, of course that's not going to happen. We'll be seeing plenty of each other. 
Uh, come now! Come, come, come! The time has come to renew ties that bind with a kiss most passionate. Keep it in your pants, motherfucker. See, this is why. <laughs> he just got, just got it, didn't he? Oh, I... Look at how happy he looks. Look at Van Helsing's joyous face at, like, literally about to blow his head off. Oh, I love you, you gun-toting maniac. Oh, good lord. I do, I love them. I love our boys. But Impy is the one that you're like, okay, simmer the fuck down. I just said I loved all of you, but you're now you're pushing the line. You go back to the corner. I still love you, but sit in the corner. <laughs> Very good, Impy. It would seem my trusty companion would also fancy a kiss. So do pucker up. Oh, it's freezing! That isn't a mouth, it's a muzzle! And not CC's! Oh, for goodness sake. And this is a reunion! A violence is forbidden, Van Helsing! Oh, I forgot. I <laughs> a violence is forbidden, Van Helsing! Dear, dear. Oh, what's all the ruckus? At least everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. He's like, ha ha ha! I mean, it's the same old shit. It's like another Tuesday up in here. And Van Helsing chasing Impy about, menacing him with his gun, Victor trying to mediate the situation, St. Germain making as if to put a halt to the proceedings, but secretly watching them with a bemused smile. After all, his domicile had paid post to these tableau countless times before. But at the far end of the dining table, Venice and Deli seem to be in the midst of a heated debate. I've been curious about this matter for some time. What in God's good name is going on with your hair? <laughs> what the fuck is with the buns, dude? Oh, Deli. Is it hair? Or some sort of clip-on fashion statement? Uh, show those to me. Uh, show them to me forthwith. Oh, my God. I wish there would be, like, a clip on hair, and I want to see Deli with, like, the thinnest buns on. He's like, yes, it's a hairband, and he puts them on. Like, they're earmuffs. I just want to see Deli wearing thinnest ear buns. Oh, my God. What? Impudent fool. Cease this barbarianism at once. <laughs> Fellows certainly haven't mellowed with age, that's for sure. In fact, they've ramped up their boisterous factor by a good 20%. I can tell from Lupin's dry chuckle more or less what he's thinking, and I nod in agreement. Well, I certainly can understand their desire to be in the highest of spirits, but what with how rarely they see one another. And anyway, seeing all our friends up to their old tricks is so much fun, and nostalgic too. I look around the room once more. Eight carefree people and one carefree dog. And this is where I live with Lupin. With all of them. This is where I learned what love was through the generous hearts of others. Watching my friends gallivanting about in their gay holiday mood is nostalgic, yes. But presently, I feel a surge of loneliness. Why? Uh, because when Tris Christmas draws back uh, Because when Christmas draws to a close, Finnis and I will be leaving. Back to Wales once again. Away from Lupin again. Stealing a glance beside me, I notice Lupin is watching our friends frolic in silence as well. Hmm, well, you mustn't think about what may or may not happen. I'm here to enjoy the present. Presents under the tree. No, I'm just kidding. And in any case, everyone is here. Wasting this time would be awful. Clink, clink! Time to tuck in! Any bunches, because seconds have been prepared. No, any bunches, because seconds have been prepared. I should learn how to fucking read. I see, this is my, like, my brain is so dead. Anyway. Impy's distinctive voice echoes through the large chamber as a cornucopia of dishes are brought to the grand table. Perfectly roasted turkeys, vibrant salads of just pickled veggies, the aroma of fresh, fresh baked bread, fruit gleaming like jewels. Mince pie chock full of dried fruit, aromatic mulled wine smelling of cinnamon. More dishes than I could scarcely name, each made by Impy at his, at his best, each looking more delicious than the last. And thus, with the sumptuous feast on Lupin's gang... Oh, wait. And thus, with the sumptuous feast, the Lupin's gang evening drew on. It was a glorious party that could have been straight out of a fairy tale. As we savored the... Panoply? Is that what that is? Panoply? They are just really with the... That! 
This is, I don't need to know what Christmas Eve is. You don't need to tell me that. Okay. Maybe you do some, maybe some people are like, what is Christmas Eve? I don't know. But like, Panoply, I want to know what that is. What? Okay. I need a glossary for words like that or like the French shit that you throw in here. You are putting things in here that are like words that nobody uses. I need glossaries of that. Not when you're like dishes, dishes, there are things that you put food on. Okay. Thanks for that. But what's a Panoply? Anyway, of dishes. I'm assuming it's like some kind of a mass of dishes, an abundance, something like that. I'm just guessing because that's what it would be to me in this sense. Some, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, catching up on one another's lives. Uh, the hour hand of the great clock made its circuit three times, uh, perhaps even four. Phew. Stepping outside for a brief break, the contrast of the hallway's cooler air was sharp. I quickly served to order my racing thoughts. <laughs> None of them have changed a lick after all. An unconscious smile rose to my lips. My friends had made me feel as though none of us had been separated a day. I now live in Wales, and I couldn't say why, but the feeling that I'm home there feels mysteriously right. After standing by the door for a while, trying to listen over the clamor and clacker emanating from the dining room. Lupin? Yeah. Oh, Lupin. He had poked his head out, peered around, and when he notices I'm there, he walks right up to me. Oh, so this is where you popped off to. Why are you chilly out in the hall? I'm fine. The cool feels good right now. And here, the night view seems so gorgeous. In the fucking hallway? Together, we look out. It's, uh, satiny moonlight. I was, well, reflected off mounds of white snow, making the night world appear wrought of platinum. We were both struck speechless by the soft, gentle glow and the silence, so different from the lights of the city. There must be a window that we can't see. A gorgeous indeed. A winter tide vision. Yes, gorgeous, soft, but somehow also a bit sad. Sad? Sad. Once the snow melts, we'll never see this exact sight again. Lupin is silent wearing an expression that for a moment made him look as though someone had stabbed him through the chest. He takes one deep, long breath. He regards me for some time. I feel his gaze on my profile. At length, he opens his mouth to speak. A lot I was about to tell you before. Can I ask you to just let me talk for a while? What you were trying to say when Shirley... happened. And when we got to the mansion. Yeah. I was rather rudely interrupted, but they do say the third time's the charm. Listen carefully. I... Then, as if Lupin's voice could be heard in the cacophony of the dining room... Hey! You left! A cheery voice echoed out from somewhere. <laughs> Poor fucking Lupin! If everyone doesn't stop cock-blocking me. M my third time charm... Another one I've heard them say is, what happens twice happens thrice. Tilly's fast approaching gallop sounded to me less like footsteps and more like mocking laughter at Lupin's expense. Then, damn, only one choice here. Grab me and run. Yeah. Lupin slaps his cheeks sharply and at once regains his composure. He wraps his arms around me, pulling me close. We're gonna hide. This is so cute. Shh! I keep your voice down. Do you want Dilly to find us? He was like a boy hiding his favorite bit of treasure where nobody could find it. We are his favorite bit of treasure. Oh my god, though. He's got us like pinned against a wall. This is sexy. Like, you can't. I can't. I don't have my little pointer thing, but like the way his arm is like above us. He's like pinned. Oh! You're, <laughs> we're very intimately close right now, and I enjoy this. <laughs> Lupin presses his body to mine with such force I nearly stumbled and fell. Oh, I tightly to him. Behind me, a solid wall. In front of me, Lupin. Our bodies, our lips, even our very hearts. So close, I imagined for a moment we could meld our beings into one. Into one. Try as I so desperately might, I couldn't hold silent. Uh, then, perhaps he spots Lupin's slightly lighter suit in the shadows. Delhi strides directly toward us. God damn it, Delhi! Oh, do I see you, Lupin? 
Have you seen the young lady hereabouts? Huh. And now that you mention it, I guess I haven't seen her for a while. Did you need her for something? All of that. I could barely make out Deli's back as he turned his head to scan the hallway. Well, the story I was telling her had yet to conclude, and I thought to continue it. Where in blue blazes could she have gone? The legend of the illustrious monarch Delacroix sojourning with Van Helsing the Fool was about to get to the best bit. I'm over here, Deli. Shut up, Spacey! I thought to respond automatically, but could not. In fact, there was no possible way to do so. Our bodies are so close, pressed together, touching. If we were only a hair's breadth closer, stealing a kiss would be effortless. Oh, you could still steal a kiss. He's not. Well, it's not really stealing if he's giving it away. I'm just saying. That sounds really inappropriate, but you know what I mean? Like, we're not stealing a kiss when he wants to give it to us. Just, yet if Deli saw, I had no doubt there would be misunderstandings. A king he was, but only still just a boy. But even knowing that... <laughs> that sounds thoroughly engrossing. How about you give me the whole story? In detail, a bit later... Lupin spoke with practiced casualness and a face of perfect innocence. The way he's looking at us, I love it. Verily, the others all wish to hear the rest, so if you find her, tell me. You tell her. The king permits no slumber this eve. You're to hear my tale till the coming of dawn. With that, Delhi pivots and dashes off on light feet. But I'm plagued by other matters. <sighs> when I released the breath I'd been holding onto for dear life... A well, fatigue so great I might collapse to the floor hits me. You hear that? And no sleep for you, young lady, he says. Incredible! He's hardly more than half your age. Um, yeah, no sleep for me, but it's gonna be because of you, Lubin. What? Nothing. <laughs> it's Christmas, and we've got all of our boys. That's a lot of... Well, no, that's too much. I can't. I joke about the man Aaron, but oh, God. So high maintenance. Anyway. We're... Right now, I have, um... Other concerns, uh, most of which are your fault. <laughs> Apologies. I needed to be just the two of us. And this is something I wouldn't be able to say if anyone could overhear. You know, they're all like... Telly's like, he's got her pinned in a corner and everyone's like... Shuffling out. Actually, hmm, as long as we're in this mansion, well, we can't really be alone together, can we? But then, Lupin chuckles as if a wonderful idea had occurred to him and extends a hand to me. In fact, it was just like the day we met. The end. <laughs> I'd be kind of pissed. Sometime later. So, where did my sister run off to tonight? Uh, we don't know yet. I thought she must have gone back to her old room, but we've knocked and there's no answer. Um, I'm not thinking this is Lupin reading it, but it's got the... Anyway, I'm just going to read it normal alone. Though the Christmas party was continuing to be merry late into the night, Victor's next words command attention. Er, about that, I just found this sheet of paper lying on the hallway floor. All present gather around Victor, curious as to how the paper could be connected to Spacey's disappearance. On it was written, I, a no gentleman thief, have this eve taken liberty to borrow one uniquely lovely flower from this residence. Attention, dearest, yet meddlesome friends. Signed, Arsene Lupin, gentleman thief. Fucking love him. <laughs> meddlesome friends. Dear yet meddlesome friends. I wonder how long Lupin and I have been speeding uh, through the city of London. From one rooftop to the next... Carrying me in his arms, Lupin runs so quickly the surrounding snowscapes recede into a blur behind us. Yes, we could climb down onto the streets and walk together properly, but I felt like letting Lupin spoil me a bit. Feeling his powerful arms around me, so close I can hear his breath, his heart beating. I can't help but be reminded of that night. The night he spirited me away from sol my solitude. And the night we met. I like how they circle back to that because that was magical. I still remember when you when you first played the game and you're like, and they're talking like the next morning. And you're like, I just love this. I love this so much. This game is so good. Why haven't I played this before? I, I still remember that feeling. I don't think a single person has even noticed us. 
That's why I travel this way. I refuse to be interrupted by another soul. Yeah, not many people on the roof, except for chimney sweeps, maybe. Even at this late hour, the streets below teem with humanity still. The city glitters. The voices of revelers on the street are a pleasant murmur. Joyful music echoes from every direction. I couldn't find a single sign that Christmas was to end just yet. London, a steel city. Its dull grays of iron and colorless cobblestone made the moniker very apt. All of that had been replaced with a riot of color for this night. Lupin runs a great distance. The festive bustle of the city gradually grows more distant. All right, this should be far enough. Lowered down to my feet after a very long time, I find myself in a place we had been once before, only in bright sunlight. Aw. The church. What a perfect place for him to tell me how much he loves me. It was the resplendent Christmas tree, but from the church roof, we now saw it from above. It's beautiful. I mean, like, okay, I wish... Oh, I hate the fact... I'm like, I hate the fact that it got to the PS4 because, like, I can't point, but, like, I love the way the lights are stringing from the top of the tree to, like, the bits and pieces, like, to the church. You know what I mean? Like, it goes on the, like, the way top of the tower part there, and then the middle, and it's just, like, I just like that. Like, who the fuck did that, though? They were like, hold on! Okay, I'm standing here and, like, throw the lights to the tree. Like, <laughs> they probably got Lupin to do it, I'm just saying. The sense imparted by the tree is very different by moonlight. Its fine ornaments reflect not the sun, but gaslight. Against the black of night, it's bright enough to beat back the dark. The Christmas tree look like it looks like the Christmas tree looks like it's spangled with real stars. It was a spot for the two of us, just far enough from the tide of London's merriment. Lupin turns to face me. Here we go. I think this is the place to finally say what I have to someone butting in. If anyone butts in, I swear to God, I'm going to throw my fucking controller and leave. Oh, he had been stymied so many times that my one syllable felt rude in the extreme. Uh, but Lupin only laughs and takes, uh, and uh, but Lupin only laughs and that makes me smile. Please do, uh, tell me. I, I really need to know what it is. At first I've been almost frightened to know. But it's different now. I could guess at his feelings. But most importantly, I understand my own. In all honesty, I want to hear him say it so much my heart begins to pound. Just grab his lapels and kiss him and be like, can I just, is that, okay. I've been regretting something I did for a while now. It was that day I saw you off to the station. I know you went back to Wales having thought it through. And your decision certainly wasn't a mistake. If you think what I'm about to say is coming too late, so be it. And this could be pure selfishness. Uh, but I... The fact is, I didn't want to be separated from you. As I listen to Lupin speak, I begin to understand the extent of what he had felt, and I ached for him. How often had he thought of me? Was it through confronting his own regret that he decided to tell me these feelings? Or these things, sorry. I wanted to see you. I wanted to be able to have conversations again. But... There have been times that I was paralyzed. What if you felt differently? Listening to every single phrase he had chosen. In all honesty, letting you go is what hit me in the gut with the fact that I can't be without you. What's worse, our friends had to play a charade on me before I realized how I feel about you. At last. Is how I understood I had been through... Is how I understood I had been through the same things. Okay, I missed that. Damn! None of this is very dashingly me. Dashingly me, is it? I see the toll this has taken on him, and I know it's my turn to say... I don't agree, maybe it doesn't wait. This isn't very dashingly of me, and we're supposed to say... I don't agree, I think it's very... Okay. I don't quite agree. I guess that what I said had come as a surprise. He wore a puzzled expression. So I simply smile... I say that because it took the both of us some time to come to our realizations, much less to share them, so that makes two of us. I've been just as lonely. I was just as unsure what to do. Even our letters, there were plenty of ways we could have checked on them. I take a step forward and place my hand on his cheek. Ah! 
for like making the first move. Now, in this moment, I know that he can feel the warmth of my hand against him. Nothing has ever given me such joy. Lupin, you came to see me. At first I heard your voice, but then I saw your face. I was so happy, I had to will myself not to cry. So many thoughts tumbled around in my head right then. All I was able to get out wasn't, I missed you. Yeah? Well then, two it is made. Two it is made. What? Two it is. Okay. Anyway. But you know. Two it is. But I don't understand that. Is it? Is it? Anyway. It was awkward. Anyway. Both of us broke into simultaneous laughter then. Seeing one another do so by the light of a Christmas tree. Quite unexpectedly. What? Speckles of glittering white began to drift down from the sky. Made visible by the gaslight. Oh! Oh, it's coming down again. Could this be a sign to get back home with all due haste? Yes, but can we watch it fall for just a while? I hold up a hand to catch some, but the snowflakes slip through my fingers. Purest white, floating on air. The particles dance all around us. It made for a magical sight, and that was when Lupin gently put his arms around me. Oh, well, let's give this another go. Let me say what I should have already, right now. I need to say something, too. I know we both feel the same, so... Kissy CG? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love these. <laughs> Stacy, I've been wishing you never left. I've been wanting to touch you. I've been wanting, uh, waiting to say this. I love you. To think just three words could make my heart skip to put butterflies in my belly. Tears are moments from drawing warm paths down my cheeks. Sure any reply would catch in my throat, I summon all my will to speak. I... I wish I had never left you either. I do very much want to. My little... I would do very much want to. My little brother is my only family. I need to spend time with him, but... At the same time... I need to be with you. I mean to say, together. Because I love you too. I never guessed that sharing our feelings for one another with the same words would be what brought me ultimate happiness. It brings us all ultimate happiness, I'm just gonna say. Our lips come together and our body heat mingles. It's gentle. However, unspoken was shared the knowledge that our true loves were within us. Book we shared the knowledge that our true loves were. It was a kiss that lasted long enough to make knowledge undeniable fact. That, like, I get what they're saying, but it just sounds awkward. You're like, it could have been so beautiful! And it kind of went a little awkward, but anyway. I have to ask Finnis what he wants. About living in Wales. About what might happen in the future. <laughs> How about this? Option three. Lupin can move to Wales if you like. <laughs> That might be lovely, too. No matter what path I chose, even the, even if there are paths I'm not yet aware of, I could not imagine a life led without Lupin by my side. We share one more brief kiss with only that truth in mind. We should take our time to think. All what choices will make you, and me, and our friends and family, and the most joy. Everybody moves back into St. Germain's Mansion and we all live together. The end. All of us. The snow continues to fall, and a dreary gray landscape is draped in white silver. Little by little, the vast accumulation of tiny snowflakes repaint the world. A miracle was wrought amongst that winter-tide wonderland. From that moment forth, I had a guardian to ensure my continual rebirth as a happier woman each day. Life with my beloved seemed bathed in such a silvers, such purest of whites. May this most wondrous of futures... May it bring us endless blessings. That was definitely like the, this is the end. I mean, it was the canon path, but it's so funny. It's like, everything else is like, okay, it ends the thing. And this is like, this is the end of everything. <laughs> but what if I, I don't know. Uh,
I was looking at something. I don't remember what it was. Now I can't for the life of me remember what it is. Oh. I saw like, like drawings or thing, like whatever. Like, you know, you see things and you're like, oh, that looks like it'd be good in anime or like whatever. And you find out that it's just a mobile game and you're like, why? And I'm not even kidding, right? So, um, God, I can't remember what it was, but so I was looking it up. I'm like, is it an anime? Like, what, like you know, whatever. And I looked it up, and it's a mobile game. And I was like, damn it, I hate it when they're mobile games. And I don't think it's actually like, and it's not like an Atome game or whatever. But I swear to fucking god, I'm reading through it. And I'm like, I just, I need to get the. You can't get it in English either. It's only in Japanese. And I was like, I will learn to fucking read Japanese. I'll figure it. But you can't download it from the Google Play Store, like at all, because it's unavailable. And you're like, that's not fair. Just because it's in Japanese, it's like, I will learn to fucking read Japanese, bitch. That's what I'm doing. So we can play these games, but you won't let me. Oh, it's me. Not even kidding. Every fucking person in this game is in that one. Fucking like Lupin's in it. And Van Helsing's in it. And Finnis is in it. And Victor's in it. I was like, look at I'm like, wait, 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 wait. It's like four out of the six degrees of code realized, motherfucker. And I'm like, I want to play this so bad. Oh, it was Bungo to Alchemist. That's what it was. Yeah. Because every time I look up Bungo Stray Dogs, I'm like, even that comes up too. Like, if you, and you're like, you know. And I'm like, what is, and it, it's, uh, I like it when I see cute boys. You're like, this, uh, wait, what is this? Is this like a game? What is it? I want to, like, a lot of mobile games. There needs to stop being, I need to, these, they need to just port all of the mobile games to fucking Steam. Because I want to play all of them. They're, they, The artwork on some of these is fucking amazing. And you're like, but I don't want to play it on my phone. I want to play it for you guys. But not with the little gotcha games where you have to like, oh, now I have to do this. And then, oh, I have to. I can't date the person I want to date because I don't have the right little outfit for my little chibi care. That's stu- Ah! <laughs> but they do that because the games are free. But, uh... They're free, so then you pay that way. I don't know, no, no. I'll pay $30 on Steam for the fucking thing. Okay, like $10 on Steam for the fucking thing. Um. Boop. All right, so here's Lupin running. Ah, I love this. Ah. That's that. Ah. He's so precious. Oh, look at that little face. He's so sweet. Oh, Lupin. <laughs> so cute. I, love this. I just fucking love the dog. Look, he's so happy to be dressed like a fucking reindeer. Oh my god. Like, Lupin's in this one, but my eyes just keep going to CC, and I'm like, look at the fucking dog. Like, oh my god. Oh god. So great. Yeah, my, like, I'm not even kidding. If we were in that same position, my eyes would be that big too, so. Like, oh, hello. Didn't Deli think it was weird that Lupin was, like, jammed into a corner? He's like, what are you doing? Nothing. You a moment alone with that corner there, buddy? <laughs> He's like, I'll get rid of the door. <laughs> deep, deep, deep. Oh, the little kissy CG. Pretty. It's so lovely in there staring. Look at her floofy dress. That's right. Close your eyes. Don't don't stare at me while we guess. That's weird. My eyes are open. What are you looking at? Like somebody's... Ugh. Weird. Anyway. As much as I love this one, this is... We gotta... This is like Lupin. This is like 100% Lupin. So there you go. Although I don't love him stressed out staring at the paper like, ah, I can't figure out what I'm writing. I love that one, but... 
This is like... Plus, you can just imagine that he's running through and he's going to just leap out of the TV into your living room. Or bedroom, or wherever the hell your TV is. Bathroom? Oh god, I hope you're not watching this in the bathroom, because that's going to be awkward. It leaps out of your fucking screen. So, I'm saying. Um. <laughs> Don't tell me. Don't tell me if you watch this while you're peeing. Or anything else. Like, that's just awkward. Just, let's not go there. Let's not share that, okay? Um. Alright, so in the next part... Woohoo! So again, I feel bad for St. Germain, because we... Yeah, we give her whatever. Um, but we will do the Lupin Victor triangle date. And then I don't know what we're going to do after that. So I don't know if I'll do the Alistair and Nemo triangle date just to get it over with. Or if we'll do some of the other triangle dates for the guys. Or if we'll just do the Finnis route or the Sholmes route or whatever. I feel like the Cantarella kind of thing, because that's like another side story we can do in between. I don't know where to... This was the logical place to start. And I don't know what the logical place to end is because now there's, because this is just, there's a bunch of random things. So I don't know if we should do like the Sholmes finish kind of route, like ending things. Um, and obviously like say we did Sholmes after the Lupin and Victor date. We do Sholmes and then we can do, is there a triangle date with Sholmes? There should be. No, it's just, no, there isn't. That's really weird. Right? Because isn't it, it should be Sholmes and Watson. But I don't think Sholmes is in a triangle date, is he? Isn't it Watson and Hansel? And you're like, why? Or is it Sholmes and Hansel? Who is that? I don't know. But anyway. But we can do, like, one of the other triangle dates. Because we can't do anything between Sholmes and Finnis. That would be weird. Um, But then after we do the Finnis part, we can do the Finnis and Delhi thing. So. Um, and then we can do the whole Cantarella thing. And then we can go back through and do the other triangle dates of our boys to kind of end the game on boyfriendos. You know what I mean? So we'll see them all again, as opposed to ending the date on something random. You know what I mean? Or we can just sprinkle them in whenever we feel like, I miss them, let's just do one of their things. And the Nemo and Alistair one, I don't know where that's going to be. Because I'm, I just, can you imagine? That's like the last thing we do. And that your last memory of this game is that. Good Lord, no. I'm not going to do that to you or me. Maybe we'll do that after the Loop and Victor one. Do that one just to get it out of the way. Also, there's a part of me that's really curious, but there's also a part of me that's like, no, no, we didn't ask for this. We've, I've said this a million times. Nobody asked for this. What is wrong with you? I have my theories on a million other triangle dates. I have laid awake at night thinking about this and going like, you could have done this or this or this or this or this or this, like anything. Hell, all five of our boys. Let's have, like, a man harem date. But why? Nemo and Alistair. Why? They didn't even need to be in this. They're bad people. We shouldn't even have to see them in this game. At all. I get why they brought them back. It's, like, nostalgia. Like, look, look, here's all the other characters that you met. Yeah, but no. No one cares. Is anyone like, oh, thank God Nemo was back. Okay, I understand I'm in, like, MPs are like path and you're like okay that's fine he did not need to show up any other time he didn't need to show up in lupins he shows up in impies and you're like i kind of understand that he's in jail and it okay <laughs> it's funny nemo's back okay i don't want to fucking date him though that's fucking creepy and weird i think what they should have had instead of that is literally the queen and fucking lionheart but like we're not there i think they should have just been like a side story where you're watching them date each other and you're like oh my god you know what i mean because i would have loved that I ship them so hard. Serious. He's so fucking in love with her, you know. But. Could have had a girl date with Shirley. Like, pal date. Like, hanging out with the girl. <gasps> we could have had just a girl's night. It's like us and Shirley and the queen. Having like a slumber party. It wouldn't be like a date, but it would be like, yeah, girl's night. Woo. Pillow fights and like. Ben and Jerry's and shit. Like, I mean, so anything. Anything you could come up with is better than that. So I'm really curious about that route. So maybe we'll do that in between just to be like, what the fuck? It no, we need Sholmes now. Let's go back to him. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, we'll do Lupin and Victor because that's that would bring us full circle of all our boys between our paths. And then we do random stuff and then whatever. So anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.